And we are back here on FCL 13. I am the boat, Brad Gilmore, joined by the Steez, the Steve, the SS Sabra is in the house. Steph, you never know what's going to happen here in the FCL, and, and that statement has never been more true when we're looking at our next match today. You know, we were supposed to see David, the survivor, Jindoyan, debut weeks and weeks ago. And right before his debut, all of a sudden, he was nowhere to be found. And James Sinister Shimo, or Sinister James Shimo, all of a sudden played two matches in one day uh, and, and won his second match against Sonny Mike Olsen. We saw that go down. And then finally, da David Jindoyan, the survivor, made his debut against Rick Hong. And guess what came from behind in the biggest comeback victory in FCL history, winning that match against Rick Hong. And now we find ourselves here. Sinister James Shimo is going to perhaps pay for all the mischievous things that he has been doing behind the scenes to try to block the shine of David Jindoyan. He's been trying to dim his light, Steph Sabra. Will the survivor be able to take down the sinister one? I don't know, but I know that this has been one of the longest feuds that we've had this season between these two. And I don't blame Jin Doyen for feeling some type of way about Shimo because Shimo's not even trying to act like he wasn't a part of screwing him over. He's owning it and loving it, and that would piss me off too. 1,000%, 1,000%, Shimo, the sinister one, been always pulling the strings and talking about the sinister, sinister syndicate. We wonder if that will come into play today. You never know. But let's take a look on how we got here to our main event this week on FCL 13. That's going to see sinister James Shimo taking on the survivor, David Jindoyan. Let's take a look. Ooh, Shimo, you have been the bane of my existence since my debut. And finally... The time has come for you to come face to face with me. David, seriously, you have to quit obsessing over what happened at FCL 5. Yes, I screwed you out of the main event, but when you really look at it, I did you a favor. You have a fire in your belly, you've got a purpose, and who gave you that? Me. They got exposed in your first match. You couldn't deal with that fact, so what did you do? sent your little minions out to shut me out of what was to be my victory. You barely pulled out the W, baby. I am on my way to the upper echelon of the FCL, and standing in my way is you. See, I'm a descendant of survivors. It is a part of me. It is in my blood. Everyone witnessed it in my match with a more worthy competitor in Rick Hong. You think the likes of you are going to take me out? No. I have no recourse but to put you down. You may have lived in my head rent-free these last couple of weeks because of your sinister actions, but all you've done is fuel the fire and now it's time to collect. Because there is nothing and no one that will stop me from getting to the very pinnacle of the first class league. Because what you're looking at is something that you'll never be, an undefeated player in the first class league. So I will do you one last favor. I'll make sure your demise is quick and painless. You claim that I'm nothing more than a means to an end. Well, I'm here to tell you that I mean to end you. And welcome back here to FCL number 13. And here we go now. It is time for our main event on FCL number 12. And let's just, let's not waste any time. Let's get right to the competitors. Introducing first. From parts unknown. With a record of one win and one loss, he is sinister, James Shimo. And there he is with the dream catcher in tow. A man who haunts maybe J David Jindoyan's nightmares. James Shima, welcome back to the FCL. An eagerly anticipated return for you. You were one and one in one day in your first time we saw you here in the FCL. Now you're going against J David Jindoyan. Tell me, what's the crux of this beef between you two? Why did you seemingly sabotage the survivor? Look, when I made the decision that I did, there was... No animosity. There was no 
malicious intent behind it. I have I had absolutely zero ill will towards David. It wasn't about taking something away from him. It was about granting an opportunity to myself. It didn't matter who was in that position. I could have just as easily done the same thing to Sonny. I could have just as easily done that to just about anyone else in the first class league. I don't discriminate. If I feel like there is an opportunity, I seize it. Bottom line. Like some people ask, some people just take Shimo. You are the sinister, so it seems like you do the latter. When it comes to today's match, do you think you're going to take the dub? And do you have any fear of this drama between you two kind of getting into a, uh, playing into a distraction almost for this match? Absolutely not, Steph. I have zero concerns about that because the only person who has gotten hot and bothered by this entire situation is David. He's emotional. He's quick to anger. And that makes a man sloppy. Nothing I do is based on emotion. Nothing I do is based on some petty need for revenge. I do things based on logic, evidence, and sound judgment. That's all there is to it. When a man is emotional, he is more likely to screw up. And the day that David Jindoian challenged me and chose to seek revenge, he made the biggest mistake of his FCL career. And I will prove that here tonight. Oh, wow. Okay. Emo starting to sound like the lawyer from the entourage. Ari. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, uh, Brad, while I have you here, um, yes. just so you know, my brother is a contract lawyer, just in case you need a new representation. I know that's been a, an issue lately. You know what? I appreciate you uh, bringing that up, and uh, this is not the time or the place. All right, congratulations to you, or good luck to you, I should say, uh, Sinister James Shimo. Yeah. All right, look at that. Look at that, Steph. You know, you know. Here's the thing. I, I learned this a long time ago, Steph. You know, you know, players mess up, right? <laughs> That's what they say sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, you know, we don't always get everything when you're right. Shooting shots, shoot or shoot. Sometimes shoot you're shoot. gonna miss. You know we what? don't stop taking shots. We're shooters, Brad. That's right. That's right. All right. Now let's bring in James's opponent. And his opponent. Making his return to the first class league. This man has a record of one win and no defeats. He is the survivor. David Jim Look at that. I told him earlier, looking real jack, baby. I like that FCL shirt. Welcome back to the First Class League. I know you have been waiting, eagerly anticipating today's match, the main event. You're taking on Shimo. What's going on through that mind of yours, David Jindoyan? Woo, Shimo, Shimo. The time has finally come. You've been ducking me since our first meeting. Now, you got to sit there and say, best things in life are worth waiting for. You will not take this shine away from me, baby. And Doyen, he called you dramatic and emotional. And I want to know your response to those types of adjectives used to describe you. And I, as a fellow Armenian, know what you mean in your promo when you talk about being a survivor. But what does that mean to you? What can you tell the people about being a survivor? Everyone saw it in my first match with Rick Hong. Survivor is a state of mind. It's a part of me. There's nothing that can keep me down. You want to talk about emotional? Of course I'm going to be emotional. You took away my victory. You think I'm going to let that slide? You barely pulled out a W against a guy that should have been easily taken care of. Okay. Look at that. Look at that. Big, big, uh, big. A lot of emotion. A lot of big words. Right, a lot, of, a lot of big energy today in the show. So I'm looking forward to it. Good luck to you, David Jindoyan. We will see what will await for you against James Shimo in that FCL arena. And here we go, Steph. We have both of our players here right in front of us. And it is this time where we're going to reveal the results of our poll on Twitch with 52% of the poll, Sinister James Shimo is the favorite according to the audience today and on Twitter with 51.5% of the poll. Again, James Shimo, almost 50-50 there, yeah, but... close, close poll. 
close poll, there's more game tape on Shimo. You wonder if that has something to do with it, or he is just spellbound and talked people into uh, all kinds of things, voting for him. You don't know. So congratulations to both of you for making it here to a main event. There are the results. And, Steph, there's only one thing left that we have to do. Let's, let's get, 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 get. There is no better way to start a match. And now for the rules of round number one. Round number one works like this. Each player will receive the same eight questions. They will write their answers on the whiteboard and they will speak and reveal the answer they have written at the end of 15 seconds. Each correct answer is worth one point. And uh, if you get all eight questions correct, you will be asked an additional bonus question, also worth nine points. For the entirety of the match, you get three questions repeated, also known as the JTE rule or the JTE rule. And you have one challenge per the entire match. If a question doesn't sound right to you or your opponent's answer isn't quite up to snuff, you can challenge that and we will take it under review. That are the, those are the rules for round number one. That's the way round number one works. As we get back to our competitors, Sinister James Shimo, are you ready? Release the Kraken. All right. And David Jindoyan, are you ready? Yeah, you know. Well, it's time for the FCL round number one. Question number one. Andrew Garfield stars alongside Sam Worthington, Hugo Weaving, Vin and Vince Vaughn in this 2016 biographical war film that was directed by Mel Gibson. How would you feel if someone called you emotional and dramatic, Brad? Well, you know what I mean? They, it might be an accurate assessment depending on the day. You know what I mean? I might not, might not be too mad about it. We need an answer in five, four, three, two, Repeat the question. One. Okay. Re a question repeat coming in here. Uh, that is the first one for David Jindoyam. Category of action adventure. Andrew Garfield stars alongside Sam Worthington, Hugo Weaving, and Vince Vaughn in this 2016 biographical war film directed by Mel Gibson. Early repeat there from The Survivor. How do you feel about war films? Is that your shtick? You know what? No, I'm a really like a lighthearted individual. We need an answer in five. Four, three, two, one. Pins down, hands up, and we go to James Shimo first. Hacksaw Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge is correct. And David Jindoyan. Nah. Didn't have it. All right. Early lead from the sinister one. Move to question number two in the category of directors. Who directed Escape from New York, Christine, and Big Trouble in Little China? We'll have to see if um, missing the first question there is going to shake the survivor at all. David Jindoyan, uh, already a question repeat. We'll see. Looking for an answer in five, four, three, two, one. We go to Shimo first. John Carpenter. John Carpenter is correct. Jindoyan, we turn to you next. John Carpenter. John Carpenter with a point on the board for Jindoyan as well. All right, good bounce back from the survivor. Still perfect for Shimo. And we get to question number three in comedies. In Austin Powers, international man of mystery, what comic actor plays the dual role of Austin Powers and his arch nemesis, Dr. Evil? Was this question written for me? Because I'm going to just pretend it was, and I'm so thankful. This is your bag? Greatest trilogy of all time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Beyonce in Gold Member, I yeah, can't, can't hang on that. Cleopatra, and she's a whole lot of woman. And we need yep. an answer in five, four, three, two, one. David Jindoyan. We're not so different, you and I. Mike Myers. <laughs> Mike Myers is correct. And James Shimo. I want sharks with freaking laser beams on their heads. <laughs> well, Mike well Myers is correct. Had a Midas touch. But he touched it too much. The PLD has confirmed that question was for me. I was right. We moved to question number four in the category of horror thriller. Directed by William Friedkin in 1973, what Academy Award nominated horror film starred Ellen Burstyn, Max von Sydow, and Linda Blair? 
All right, and here we go. I watched The Conjuring last night. Couldn't sleep. You know what? That's, that's why I avoid those movies. Yeah, we need answered five, four, three, two, one. We go to Shimo first. The power of Christ compels you, The Exorcist. The Exorcist is correct. One of the scariest movies of all time. Jin Doyen, we move to you next. About to exercise this demon of Shimo, The Exorcist. <laughs> the Exorcist is correct. Both competitors getting number four correct. All right, James Shimo, still perfect as we get to question number five in movie release dates. Steven Soderbergh was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Director for both Aaron Brockovich and Traffic, which came out in what year? Aaron Brockovich owned the like smaller glasses look, those 90s glasses that have come back. Yes. Farrah was rocking some cute ones when I met her. She absolutely was. And we need to an answer in five, four, three, two, one. Shout out to the float. And we need an answer from the survivor. 2000? 2000 is correct, James Shimo. Nope. Didn't have it. Okay. And now Ooh. we are back in this thing four to four. Tied match as we move to question number six in the category of 1990s. What 1992 Disney animation film won two Academy Awards for Best Score and Best Original Song for A Whole New World? You have no idea how much I'm trying to refrain from busting out into song at the very Don't moment. Stop. Oh Keep my gosh, I can't. Go I, for can't it. I can't do it, but. <laughs> We need an answer in five. We should do a duet. Four, three, <laughs> two, don't one. We need pens down, hands up. Do not tempt me. We need an answer from Mishimo first. Prince Ali, fabulous. He, it's Aladdin. Aladdin is correct. One of the greatest animated films of all time. Jin Doyen, we turn to you next. Aladdin. Aladdin, yes. Both men getting that correct. And we keep a tie game. The best. Uh, Disney movie of all time, in my opinion. And we get to number seven, famous actors and actresses. Who stars as the titular characters in 1990's Dick Tracy and 1991's Bugsy? Dick Tracy. Mm-hmm. Bugsy. I mean, what, I mean, Dick Tracy's a cool name, but to be have your name be Bugsy, and like, that's like a legit name, that's awesome. But to make Dick Tracy cool is a huge endeavor. <laughs> we need an answer in five, four, three, two, Repeat the one. Question. Survive. Repeat the question. Okay. And here we go. Your question again, famous actors and actresses. Who stars as the titular characters in 1990s Dick Tracy and 1991's Bugsy? You are right. You got to be a certain kind of individual to pull off Dick Tracy. Like, it's kind of aggressive a little bit. My you know name's I mean? Dick. Yeah, that's aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> we need an answer in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> You're too much. <laughs> Do we go to the survivor? Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty is correct. And David, I mean, James Shimo, excuse me, didn't have nope. Didn't have it. All right, six to five, six to five. One question left in round one. Question number eight in the category of franchises. How many movies in the Jaws franchise were released in the 1970s? Now, are these movies that you frequented? Did I've you ever watched, see Jaws? I've, I've watched Jaws once, and I have not. I don't, I'm going to out myself. I didn't know there was a sequel. Need to five, four, three, and two, one. We go to Jindoyan first. Two. Two is correct. We go to Shimo next. Two. Two is correct. Back on the board, Shimo is six, seven, moving into round two. Moving into round number two. Yeah, um, Jaws 19 is what they got all the way up to. And we get to round number two. This is how round number two works. Round number two works like this. We call it the whirl round. 
We call it the Whirl Round because competitors will have a spin of the category wheel. Now, you can re-spin that wheel one time. If it lands on something you don't love, unless it lands on opponent's choice, then that has to stay. Competitors will get four questions from their chosen category. Questions are worth two points each. Uh, if multiple choice is requested, the value then drops down to one point. Competitors will have 15 seconds to answer each question. Now, big difference here in round number two. Opponents may steal if a competitor gives an incorrect answer. All right, repeats and challenges are still in effect here in round number two, the world round. As we get back to the field of play right here, David, the survivor, Jindoyan, is up by one point. So, David, you can select if you want to go first or allow... Uh, Sinister James Shimo to go. I will defer. You will defer. All right, defer. So James Shimo, you will be spinning the wheel first. Are you ready, sir? Kill us a lie. Well, then I think that means yes. Let's give the wheel the whirl. Me. Here it is right now. Both, last time, last game, both players getting opponent's choice. We'll see if the wheel will be more or less friendly this time. And it lands on John Hughes. Would you like to keep John Hughes or spin again? I'll stick with John Hughes. All right. Four questions coming to you in the realm of Mr. John Hughes, one of the greatest directors of the 1980s for sure, John Hughes. All right. Your first question, James Shimo, in the realm of John Hughes. Steve Martin and John Candy star as a pair of travelers who share a three-day trip full of misadventures in this 1987 comedy. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Planes, trains, and automobiles being remade with Will Smith and Kevin Hart is correct for two points as we get to your next question. Love this movie. Oh, fantastic film. Fantastic film. We get to your next question. Who stars as Ferris Bueller, a precocious young high school slacker alongside Mia Sarah, Alan Ruck, and Jennifer Grey in 1986's Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick is correct. He'll always be Inspector Gadget to me. And Shimo we get to coming your, in quick with these answers. Coming in hot and ready. And we come with your third question in the realm of John Hughes. This The Office actor made his feature film debut in the 1991 dramedy Curly Sue, which was the final film Hughes directed. We need to answer in five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. One. All right, opting for multiple choice. And your options are, is it A, John Krasinski, B, Rain Wilson, C, Ed Helms, or D, Steve Carell? We need an answer in five, four, three, two. Ed Helms. One. Ed Helms is incorrect. We're going to ask David Jindoyan the same question, and I will give you your multiple choice options. This The Office actor made his feature film debut in the 1991 dramedy Curly Sue, which was the final film John Hughes directed. Is it A, John Krasinski, B, Rain Wilson, C, Ed Helms, or D, Steve Carell. Rain Wilson. Rain Wilson is also incorrect. Mm -hmm. It is Steve Carell. Steve Carell made his feature film debut in that. All right, James Shimo, back to you. You have one more question in the realm of John Hughes. And here we are. Home Alone in Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. The Wet Bandits, played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Sturm, have renamed themselves what? The Sticky Bandits. Sticky Bandits is correct for two points. Two big points. It is 12-7. 12-7 after James Shimo went oh, after John Hughes category, Steph. Great. It was a great round for Shimo, and that was a fun category. We haven't had John Hughes category come up yet in no. round number two. We have not, you know, James Shimo missing one question. David Jindoyan not able to pick up the steal. Lucky. All, uh, very lucky there right there. It is only a, it's a five point lead right now before David Jindoyan goes. And now it is your turn, Survivor, to give the wheel a whirl. Are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. All right, now let's give the wheel 
the world. Look at that world. Oh, there he goes. David joining in in the festivities. And we'll see what it lands on. Is it going to be favorable to him? Lands on comic book movies. Let's keep it. All right. Little, little deliberation for himself in comic book movies. Steph Sabra would be administering your questions in comic book films. And here we go with your uh, first question. All right, David, for your first question. This 2010 film about a young man who dreams of becoming a real-life superhero stars Aaron Johnson, Chloe Grace Moretz, and Nicolas Cage. Kick-ass. Kick-ass is correct. And I think that's the first time we've been able to actually successfully use the word kick-ass in the FCL. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> we move to your second question in round number two. Vin Diesel stars in this 2020 comic book film that follows a soldier who was killed in action only to be brought back to life with superpowers. Bloodshot. Bloodshot is correct. The last movie I saw in theaters before the pandemic hit. Oh, well, um, lucky you? <laughs> Not sure. I'm not sure if that Anytime was good or bad. Anytime in the theater is a good time, so I have That's no true. complaints. We move to our third question in round number two. This 1994 comic book movie featured Cameron Diaz making her feature film debut alongside Jim Carrey. The Mask. Smoking. The Mask is correct for your third question in round number two. We move to your fourth and final question in the category of comic book movies. Who stars as Judge Dredd in the 2012 comic book film Dredd directed by Pete Travis? Carl Urban. Carl Urban is correct, making that a perfect round number two for Jindoyan. Wow, big pull there, 15 to 12, a three-point advantage by the survivor uh, coming out of round number two. Uh, you know what? I'm glad that The Mask got a little love today on the show. The Mask, one of the just one of the greats, one of the greats of all Your time. Your boy Jim Carrey brought up again. I know. Can you believe that run that he had in 94? Yeah. Anyway, we got to get to round number three. Round number three in the FCL works like this. This is our final round of action, and competitors will pick three numbers that correspond to three categories. Each competitor will get three questions. Questions are worth two, three, and five points, respectively. You will have 15 seconds to answer each question. There is no stealing or multiple choice in this round. However, you still have usages of your JTE rules as well as your challenges if you see fit. This is where we stand in the scoreboard right now. David Jindoyan has a three-point advantage on Sinister James Shimo. So, David, you get to select your three numbers first. What do you got? Let's go seven, three, and 15. Seven, three, and 15 for the survivor. Seven, three, and 15. And for uh, James Shimo, what do you got, sir? You know, Brad, everybody loves an underdog, so I'm going to select three numbers synonymous with one. I'm going to go six, one, nine. Okay. Ray Mysterio reference from Sinister James Shimo's San Diego stand up. Uh, Shimo, we're going to stick with you right now. There you go, Steph Sabron. Oh, well. Uh, China. Never forget. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we get to Shimo. You uh you selected the number six. Six. You selected the number six. And in round number three here in the FCL, number six corresponds to the realm of Matt and Ben. Matt and Ben. So I will be administering your questions here in this round. And we'll go to Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. All right. Category. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck and your questions, sir, in Matt and Ben. Ben Affleck made his directorial debut with this 2007 American neo-noir mystery crime thriller starring Casey Affleck, Michelle Monaghan, Morgan Freeman, and Ed Harris. Gone, baby, gone. Gone, baby, gone is correct for two points. Big two points there from Sinister James Shimo. He now is only behind by one. So I will ask him now his 
three-point question in round number three. You selected the number one, of course, in 619. That corresponds to the category of black cinema. Black cinema. And here we are in your question of black cinema. Who plays Sid, the sister of Martin Lawrence's detective Marcus Burnett in 2003's Bad Boys 2? In answer in five, four, three, two, one. Repeat the question. All right. And here is your question. Who play, what actress plays Sid, the sister of Martin Lawrence's detective Marcus Burnett in 2003's Bad Boys 2? And we need an answer in Five, four, three, two, one. Taraji B. Henson. Taraji B. Henson. P. Henson is incorrect. We are looking for the lovely Miss Gabrielle Union. Gabrielle Union. All right, so Shimo, it now comes down to your five point question in category number, th uh, round number three. You selected the number nine, which corresponds to the category fantasy science fiction fantasy science fiction and here we go for your five point question in fantasy sci-fi and here we are in 2005's the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy warwick davis provides the physicality for marvin an android who is clinically depressed who voices marvin Shout out to him, one of the best professors at Hogwarts, Mr. Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman is correct. A huge five-point pickup from Sinister James Shimo. Now a four-point advantage against the survivor. Steph, if David Jindorian can get his two and his three correct, he wins the match. If he only gets his five correct, he wins the match. He's got some room to play here. Last time we saw him went perfect in his round three. We will see if he can repeat that as we get to your first question, David, is you selected the number seven. The number seven corresponds to animated movies. Animated movies. Steph Sabra will be administering your questions. And here we go in animated movies. Category of animated movies. Your first question. Robin Williams appeared in two animated movies in 1992. Name both of them. We answer in five, four, three, two. All I got is Aladdin. All right. Fern Gully, the last rainforest. Ah, Fern Gully. Fern Gully, the last rainforest. All right. It's okay. That was just David's two-point question. He still has two in his bag. He still has a three and a five. The five-pointer, though, now he needs to hit in order to win the game. If my math proves me correct, we will see. So this is a kind of a, uh, a warm-up question, if you will, for him. Nevertheless, points matter always. You selected the number three, David Jindoyan. And the number three corresponds to Pixar. Pixar. So we go from animated movie to Pixar. And here we go. Your question in Pixar. Steph Sabra, take it away. This 2009 Pixar film features characters such as Carl Fredrickson, Russell, Charles F. Muntz, and Ellie. Up. Up is correct. Also a great Cardi B song. If it's up, then it's up. Then it's up. Then it's, up, then it's stuck. <laughs> and we get to you now, David Jindoyan, your five-point question, which will determine the match. You selected the number 15. Number 15 corresponds to Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. All right. And... Your five-point question 
is thus. This 2004 Jonathan Demi film based on a novel and a reworking of the previous 1962 film stars Denzel, Meryl Streep, Liev Schreiber, and John Voight. Big five points here. Enjoying has two repeats left. So we'll decide the match. Need an answer in five, four, three. Repeat the question. This 2004 Jonathan Demi film based on a novel and a reworking of the previous 1962 film stars Denzel, Meryl Streep, Liev Schreiber, and John Voight. here we need an answer in five four three repeat two. the question your last jte of the match this 2004 jonathan demi film based on a novel and a reworking of the previous 1962 film stars denzel meryl streep leave schreiber and john voigt Enjoy his 15 seconds. You need an answer in five, four. The Bone Collector. And your winner, Sinister oh, yeah. Dave Shimo. We were looking for the Manchurian oh, candidate. Man. The Manchurian candidate. And James Shimo pulls off the victory. Wow, we're going to talk to both these men here in a minute. Sinister James Shimo now moves to 2-1 and one here in the FCL. Steph Sabra coming down to that five-point question. What a hard fight, tough battle between both of these competitors. I was really on the, as you said, you were on the edge of your bed. I was on the edge of my folding chair as this was uh, unfolding in front of our eyes. What are you on a porch? You got some <laughs> lemonade and sweet tea by you? <laughs> I agree, though. I really didn't know what was going to happen until the very end. And Jindoyan, as we've seen as in his first match, claims the name Survivor and he reps it well because that is what he does. He endures and he lasts in these matches and gets through them. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough today because of that five point question in that third round. But a really impressive showing of both of them. And well done to Shimo. Yeah, well done to Shimo. It looked like James Shimo was all but out of it. He hits that five-point question. Alan Rickman, difficult, difficult five-pointer, pulls it well, and then it was all on David David Jindoyan. Now, David could have won that match by hitting his two and his three, only hits his three, and then has to use two JTs on that five-point question. Not able to uh, pull the Manchurian Candidate. Manchurian Candidate. It's a movie I've never even seen before. I'm sure that it's great, but I've never seen it before, so I'm right there in the same boat with him. Uh, nevertheless, James Shima wins today. And Steph, you have the privilege, I believe, of talking to our winner today, Sinister James Shima. Sinister James Shimo. I know that's got to feel good to get this second dub now in the FCL. You did what you said you were going to do. What are some of the emotions running through the Sinister's mind right now? I mean, you got to understand. I may be down every once in a while, but I am never out, all right? Yes, things looked bleak, but I was I was confident. When, when it came down to the wire, yeah, I got a little bit shaken up here and there, but I was confident because he didn't seem like he knew it. I saw him making his little notes, trying to do a little checklist to see if he could figure it out. And when he blurted that out, I was like, I don't know that that's right, but I don't know that it's wrong. So it all just kind of blurred together for a half a second but um no i'm feeling fantastic of course you know to me this was a foregone conclusion granted it might have looked a little dicey but now here i stand i am two and one which if i'm not mistaken is similar to another individual here in fcl who may have recently been up for a certain prize shall we say so i don't know i don't know what that means going forward but I think uh, 
I think our commission and I will need to have a, a little discussion. Well, you're definitely making waves, and you certainly have said something in your play today in this match, which you indeed came out victorious. But I want to talk about some of those portions of the match where you didn't have the right answers and you were coming from behind in round number three. How? Uh, what was it with those questions? Were those more blind spots or um, lack of technique? Or what do, you, what do you think, and how will you change that moving into your next round, which you've kind of spoken about hoping to get uh, higher, maybe a title match in the future? Well, I will say this. In a couple of those, there were just some blank spots. With regards to the movie release date question I missed, it was a matter of picking the wrong year. Uh, some of the other ones, it was just a matter of either blind spots that I hadn't really filled in yet. Uh, in the case of the uh, the Steve Carell question in round two, like obviously when I think of the American version of The Office, my mind immediately goes to Steve Carell, but it seemed like too obvious of an answer. So I kind of psyched myself out of it, which is something that I will endeavor not to do in the future. Again, I said this before after my first match with Kate. Yeah. I reassess, I rebuild, and I continue forward. That's the best that you can do. And I will go ahead and say this, because I know there are going to be a handful of people who were expecting some sort of shenanigans from my associates, shall we say. I told them to stay home because I didn't feel like I needed them. They were more than welcome to watch, but they weren't necessary today. And I proved that. And I will say this, uh, there is another thing that I do want to bring up because I know, again, our esteemed commissioner made note of this this week on this week in the FCL. Inner geekdom play is coming up. And if you think I'm dangerous in singles, you'll find I'm five times as lethal in inner geekdom. So be ready, FCL. Well, big talk. I'd love to see it. I've heard that there perhaps could be a lady sinister watching this match. Any words? For the Lady Sinister? She is the one who continues to keep me grounded. She supports me in everything that I do. And there's just no other way to say it. She she completes me. So thank you so much for being there for me, sweetheart. I love you to death. Mwah. I mean, you are totally becoming Dr. Evil. You have uh, someone who does complete you, even though you are sinister. That is amazing. Well done today. I can't wait to see you back in the FCL, and I hope you have a great night celebrating, Shimo. Always a pleasure, Steph. Bye. Well, you know what? What an interesting individual. James Sinister Shimo and the Syndicate get the dub today in FCL 13's main event. But we got to hear from the guy who came so close, and he survived in his first match, and he battled the entire time. Here in in this second match that he had in the FCL, came up short, Manchurian candidate away from the victory. Let's hear from the man himself, David Jindoyan. Jindoyan, great match today. The thing about survivors is it's not always about the win. It's about surviving until you get the big win. And I know you already know that, but what are some of the thoughts and feelings and emotions you have post-match? You know, um, you can call it fate, destiny, whatever you want. No matter what happens, I will survive this. I will move forward. And I can't wait to see it. I, we've seen you do it in a match, and I'm sure we'll see you doing it in your next match moving forward, as I know a lot of the fans have loved to watch you play, myself and Brad included. But when we're talking about this match specifically, it came down to the round three, those uh, three and five point questions and you missing the first two point question. It seemed as though you did have a general knowledge of the questions asked. It was just a miss in terms of where you went to pick in your answer. Yeah, uh, as soon as I heard Fern Gully, it kind of kicked me because I thought for some reason it was like 89, 90, not mm -hmm. 92. So it was close. But the one thing about this game is if you're not getting better, you're not learning. If you're not learning, you're not growing. If you're not growing, you're not living. If you're not living, you're what? Dying. Preach in the church of David Jindoyan tonight. It was really fun watching you. If you do, when you do come back to the FCL, is this Shimo Jindoyan rivalry going to continue? Is this the person you want to take on next? Or do you have someone as well on your site of who you'd like to compete against? Honestly, Shimo's probably always going to be in my sights. I'm still kind of frustrated I couldn't take him down now. Never say never. You never know what the future can bring. Better watch your back, buddy. Watch your back. Well, you heard it here first, David. It's been a pleasure seeing you again, and I hope to see you again in the future very soon, and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Thanks, Steve.
Much love. I don't know why Steve caught on the way that it did, but it it really, it it really caught on with the people. And I'm not going to complain. My grandpa's name is Steve. It's a good name. Solid They're, name. Steve Irwin. Steve uh, Austin. Steve Jobs did some cool things for the world. <laughs> Steve Harvey has the greatest bald head of all time. And mustache, arguably. That's right. It's the, the combo. I think he's got the combo platter that nobody else has. So you are added to the pantheon of great Steves in this world. But um, nevertheless, David Jindoy and James Shimo, we just saw it. That was FCL 13. We got a big week of action for you next week. FCL 14 is going to see the return of the travesty. Travis Fishburne taking on gentleman Chris Adams, as well as Mad Max Haddad taking on Robert Montano of late to the party. An eagerly anticipated battle in our main event that goes down next week. Week that goes down next week, but uh, Steph, why let the people know where they can find you, follow you, and what are you whirling about this week? Heck yes! Well, the big thing, the newest show on the SEN network, uh, dropped another episode with me, Christian Harloff, the man who makes this all happen, and Brett Sheridan. Check that out and all of the other episodes that have dropped. It is a great show. We're doing really big things out on that network. I'll be with the Sith Council with Christian Harloff and Mike Kalinowski on Fridays talking Bad Batch and any other news. And then, you know, with my favorite women on the entire planet, Doreen Ariano and Roxy Stryer on the World Girls, Wednesday, 6 p.m. We will be celebrating Pride, so come celebrate with us tomorrow on our, our YouTube channel on Sundays at 7 p.m. Brad, what about you? Always shout out to the world girl. Shout out to Darina, who gave me a great uh, taco recommendation while I was in town, and it was delicious. So no surprise there. She's, she came through with the food. But uh, you can find me on all social media at Brad Gilmore. Check out the Hall of Fame with myself and Booker T over there on the Reality of Wrestling channel. We're about a few thousand away from that 500,000 mark, so please go subscribe to us right this very second. And you can check out all the other things that I'm doing over there. So for Steph Sabra, for PLD, for Dwayne Burke, Jacob Patrick, our entire writing and production staff, my name is The Boat, Brad Gilmore. This is FCL 13. We will see you next week right here, same time, same place. Y'all have a good one.